In this problem, we're going to find the curl of the electric field, but not just for a point charge, which we have right here, but for a volume charge here. So what I drew right here is a cross-section of some sort of amorphous volume charge. And, uh, of course, we are looking at evaluating the electric field. Uh, in order to, to find the curl of it, we have to find, evaluate the electric field at, at um, all the points, some all, some all the arbitrary variable points around that uh, amorphous weird uh, uh, volume charge density here, which has a volume charge density of rho, which uh, rho depends on a distance from the coordinate center, which we just define as some sort of point here in the center. It could be anywhere, but um, but it de depends on the uh, distance from the origin center all the way to some distance r prime uh, from the origin center. And of course, our separation vector and our vector from the origin center to the point where we're graduating, evaluating the electric field is all defined like this. So if you're a little bit confused by this, I'd, I'd highly recommend and go uh, revisit the um, other sections in uh, the ch this chapter, chapter two. And so what we have here, of course, is uh, the general version of the finding the electric field due to some sort of charge density uh, um, at some arbitrary point. So what we can go ahead and do is just start finding the uh, curl of this big chunk right here. So I'll just go ahead and begin with that curl of 4 pi epsilon naught, and we have this um, integral, which we're not necessarily going to put any bounds on it yet, curly r, r prime, prime here, okay, and now what we can do is, uh, so this curl is really mainly attacking the, um, it's going after uh, uh, everything in terms of the uh, coordinate axis, right? So since our uh, separation vector here is a technically a function of um, r prime and r vector, and since the the curl is mainly going after the r, the the uh, the electric field point right here, it can move past the uh, the constants, the integral, the volume uh, charge density, and mainly just operate on our separation vectors. So we'll go ahead and just make that apparent now. Put the constants out in front. I'll just go ahead and leave this as a row. There we go. And next, uh, we'll just go ahead and define uh, this uh, r prime, or separation vector r prime, over uh, the magnitude squared of that vector, unit vector, or the separation vector as a v vector. And this is just to be uh, consistent with the uh, um, the the inside cover of the uh, Griffith textbook, because what I'm going to write next is the definition of the curl in spherical coordinates, because that's what we're working with here, since we're working with a volume charge density. So this is, uh, I'm just now expanding the curl uh, uh, operating on this uh, V vector here, in general terms, as, as general terms as possible. So it's one over uh, R sine theta times the partial respect to theta. So where V is V sub theta is the uh, theta component of the V vector. This is all. This is the all the r hat component of the curl, and then now there is the uh, theta component. Let's see here. So this is the partial of the r component, but we have that. Puts the partial in respect to any sort of um, phi components. We have none, but like I said, I'll I'll go back and. and make these apparent which ones are actually um, positive or non-zero or um, or zero 
And then finally, this is the uh, phi component here. Curl is a long, uh, long thing to work with. Here we go. And this is the phi component. All in parentheses times our volume charge element here. Okay, now let's look through each and every one of these here and which ones are non-zero. So again, our V vector is defined by uh, our uh, separation vector R hat uh, over R squared, and that's defined by this. So there are no theta components, so that means this is zero, this is zero. There is a, an R component, but there are no phi's within that R component, so this whole partial just goes to zero. This goes to zero. There's no phi component here, or v component here, theta. And then there is an r component, but the partial in respect to theta is zero. So this whole thing's end up becoming just zero. And that means this entire integral all just goes, drops down to zero. Yeah. And then finally, and, and that makes sense, right? So, um, Whenever th these uh, these volume charge elements, they can all point off in different directions, right? This uh, each one of these arrows can contribute differently to the electric field, making them all point in different ways. But whenever you take the uh, uh, the curl of it, right, it's just like doing a closed line integral. That no matter what, if you go uphill or downhill or push against the electric field or pull against it, whenever you come back to the same point again, your net force or your network will be essentially equal to zero is one way to think about it kind of conceptually and that seems to make sense right here too and um, um, yeah that's uh, how you do this problem